Today's interview is with Mary Kennedy. She was on the verge of diabetes and decided to take control of her weight. So my name is Mary Kennedy and I live in Kingston, Ontario and Kingston is on the shores of Lake Ontario. So I'm very close to the United States actually. I'm not just like literally you could fly over the lake and I would be in the United States. And I'm 55 years old and I work as a musician and I work at Queen's University and I teach music. That's what I do for a living. And in, let me think about this. When I was, um, I was skinny most of my life actually. And then when I had children, I ended up getting larger. And I, I'd say I probably the heaviest I ever was was 215 pounds. And that was just recently. So, and I never really tried to lose weight and I never really had any issues with how big I was. You need to know there was never any problem. I didn't really care that I was sad. I wasn't a yo-yo dieter. I didn't spend my life fixated on this. So I was sad that I couldn't buy skinny clothes. I'm not gonna lie about that. That's the truth. <laughs> so what happened to me was this. I started exercising in a year, 2016. I started exercising and I was exercising, lifting weights three times a week but I wasn't doing any cardio and I was doing pretty well. And I'm, and in 2017, I went to the doctor and I, he said, you know, we haven't done a blood test on you for a very long time. Why don't we do that? And I said, okay. And when he took my blood, it came back that my A1C was elevated. So I was very close to being diabetic. So that was, I'm going to tell you about that. So I opened up the computer and I looked at that result and I, like this it was a blank, like this dark thing and I fell down a hole and there were two doors in front of me. When I opened that first door, it was the door to being becoming a diabetic. And I looked down that hallway and it was very short and it was full of, it was full of amputations and kidney problems and eye problems and cardiac problems. So I closed that door and I said to myself, Ooh, that is not the door you want to go down. And I opened up the second door and the second door was a, a, a road of possibilities. That was the second I decided my life had to change. Like that was, and I can tell you that was on a weekend and I had company coming and I said to my husband, like, we are not going to discuss that until Monday, but like it's changing. And so on Monday morning, I got up and I just, I had no clue what I was going to do, but I thought I'll just cut back on what I eat because basically you need to know I had a lot to work with. I ate my way to fat. There is no doubt about that. So I was eating, you know, cheesecake for breakfast and cheesecake for lunch and, you know, whatever I wanted at any time of the day. However, I didn't drink, like I had quit drinking sugary drinks. So that was not a problem for me, but I ate too much. So I just, by cutting back a little bit at a time, I lost a whole bunch of weight at the very beginning. So the first three months, and I'll go in implements of three months because every three months they do your A1C. So I okay. started cutting back and I lost... I don't know. I can't even remember. So that was so September. And then the next test I had was like the beginning of December and my A1C had dropped and everything was looking good, but it still wasn't really perfect. So I was still eating sort of three meals a day at this point in a normal fashion. So then the next one, I was like, wow, there has to be more to this and meets the eye. So I went through Christmas just because I didn't, you didn't want to worry about that too much. And then in January, I started to investigate other little avenues. And so one of the things that I came across was keto eating. So I didn't know anything about that. So I was like, I'm going to, you know, investigate that. And that opened up a bit of a door because I, that time I figured out I shouldn't have so many carbohydrates. And they had lots of keto recipes that had like muffins and stuff made with almond flour that enabled me not to, um, you know, I didn't have to have the carbohydrates and muffins. So I could kind of eat normally, but, you know, instead of a hamburger bun, I would make little buns made out of almond flour and coconut flour. So that's fine. I get my next A1C in three months. So I'm like, wow, it's still not really great. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was down. Like, it was almost normal, very close to normal. I thought, you know, I'm going to, like, type into YouTube, like, how to cure type 2 diabetes, okay? Right. Yeah. So that was when my life changed, like, that moment. And that brought up Jason Fung. Right. Who is a doctor. It brought up you, I think, too. It brought up uh, Dr. Berg, maybe. Like a whole bunch of people that came up. And I thought, oh. And now I'd already kind of, because of the keto thing, had heard about, about fasting. But I did not pay one lick of attention to that. I just thought they were all crazy. That is the <laughs> truth. Like, really? So, and then I was like, so I read about, I read, I got the books. Right on Amazon, ordered the books, got um 
Jason Fung's books, and I read those from cover to cover, the obesity code, diabetes code, and the fasting book. And mm. I thought, oh, I, I, this is the answer to my, my life. So I said, I'm going to try. This is, this is it. So this got me to March now at this point, because I, one of the type of personality that I am, I don't do anything in haste. <laughs> like I like to, I know you've seen this because you've seen that, you know, how we've talked. I think about what I'm going to do for two weeks. I've thought about these questions. And so I thought to myself, you know, I'm going to try fasting and, but I'm not going to go cold turkey. And that's what I would tell people. Like, this was not just, I got up one day and did this. This was like, I'm going to have a plan to do this. Right. And then I said to myself, okay, am I going to do this? And I thought I'm just going to get up one day and I'm not going to eat breakfast. And that's what I did. And when I went to work and I worked and I was like, well, this is like so easy. Like, but it was easy, easy. I came home and ate my lunch. I'm like, okay. And I said, I know the next. So I did that for a few days because, you know, I make sure I could do it. And then I just started doing what they said, extend the hours you don't eat. Till I eventually got to one meal a day. That's how I did it. And it was, but you need to know it was over several weeks. This was not a instantaneous get to one meal a day. I just didn't stop eating. And, um, and then I, so basically now I eat one meal a day. That's basically what, and I think that's how I discovered you. I was trying to think how I came across your videos. Right. Yeah. I would sit at night and watch them endlessly. Like you need to know <laughs> that's how, like, because they were five minutes long, some of the earlier ones, and I thought, oh, this is just the perfect thing. And you had the answers to everything. Uh. And so I was like, you know, and, and basically I feel like I'm about a year and a half behind you in this journey. Mm -hmm. So I, um, so that's how I started. And so that's how I started the fasting journey. And I started that in July. So mm -hmm. in the terms of weight loss, when I started at 215, I now weigh 161. I, I weigh myself every day as you have recommended. Now that was another thing I had seen. Some people say weigh yourself. Some people say don't. I just get up, take my clothes off, go to the bathroom. And then I weigh myself and I write it down and then I, I record it. I also have a Fitbit now, so I put it in the Fitbit. Right. So that is, you know, so basically that's what I do. And mm -hmm. I eat one meal a day. And I and the, the things that I have learned from this are you need to eat a good meal every day. You can't be cheating yourself on those meals. We, I'm sure you know this. So I need to be able to make it through to the next day till I have my next meal. So when I eat, I say to myself, well, did I eat enough? Yeah, or if not, I eat a little bit more because I can tell, you know, like mm -hmm. tonight, for instance, I had chicken wings for dinner, just plain. we didn't have any vegetables with them, we made them at home. Mm -hmm. And then I had some strawberries with a bit of whipped cream on the top, the stuff that comes out of a bottle. And when I, uh, when I finished it, that, yeah, that's not enough. So I had, right. a, little, I had a granola bar, because I want to fast tomorrow, right? So I don't want to, and then I, I'll be good. Right. I'm, I'm set till tomorrow. And I, so I have also drink coffee in the morning. So I have coffee. I'm trying to get my coffee to black. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'll be successful because I really like cream, like a lot you of cream. <laughs> <I do. laughs> yeah. So I'm weaning myself. So now I just have maybe three tablespoons of cream and I actually can tolerate that. So I think maybe the world will be okay if I do that. And I usually drink two cups of coffee a day, sometimes only one, it just depends. So that's basically how I eat. And I eat now, I wouldn't say I, I watch what I eat, but I definitely am aware of carbohydrate intake. And that's just because I don't want to become diabetic. So I'm not going to sit down to a great big bowl of rice or pasta. And if we do have that, then I tend to have like a little bit of pasta and I use like zucchini or something to go in with it. So I'm just a bit, I'm aware of it, but I'm not crazy. About, right. you know, so not, and I can, I can, I'll eat a cookie, but I won't have six cookies. You see, before I would have had six cookies. If I have a cookie right. now. And if we have cheesecake, I have one slice of cheesecake. And, and you talked a little bit about this because it has to be a sustainable lifestyle, right? When I opened that door to that hallway that was way down, the one that was the rest of my life, it was the rest of my life. So it's not going to be, this is no diet. This is no, um, this is, yeah, this is not a diet. This is how I'm going to live the rest of my life till I die. That's hopefully when I'm old, really. Right, right. So, so I said that to myself. So when you think about having to do this for people who are just starting down this journey, mm -hmm. you have to think of it that way. So I live in a family like you live in a family. So not eating mm -hmm. is not really an option. So right. I need to sit down once a day and have it. And it works really well if we have dinner. In a perfect world, I think if I were living alone, I'd eat my big meal at breakfast. 
and then just coast through the rest of the day until the next day. But that doesn't work for my family because I have a husband and a daughter who still lives at home. And so we eat family dinners at night and it can't be crazy food. It's not fish every night. So I basically would say I eat uh, like you normal meals, but I'm, I don't overeat the carbohydrate part of it. Like I don't like mashed potatoes. I never liked potatoes. We ate a lot of that when I was young. I don't, yeah, I saw you were in Idaho with potatoes. No potatoes. <laughs> anyway, I, it, or, but I do like sushi, but I've, you know, discovered I can have a couple of pieces with rice and then eat the sashimi, which is, is, you know, just the fish part of it. So that is, you know, basically how I eat. How are your numbers now? How are my numbers now? Uh, so they are basically, I'm one point away from being normal. So in the United States, they don't measure it the same way. I'm 5.6. I really should, I might even be 5.5. I need to be 5.4. I would be, you'll hear me yell where you live when I get to 5.4. Because okay. it's going to be a very happy day. When I saw the diabetes clinic the other day, I told them when they see me next, it'll be 5.4. It will be. I mean, I have no doubt about it. I'm on the downward trend. Right. And if the way I'm eating, it's, there's no, that's going to happen. And um, I didn't really have any other health issues. So that was, fortunately, that's the sad part is that, it, it, well, it's the sad and the lucky part. I had no clue. Mm -hmm. It's just lucky the doctor tested my blood. I'd still be on that path. Right. Still in 215 pounds and not watching what I ate. And do you feel like you have any challenges that you're still trying to work through? Or do you feel like you just like, you're, you're going on and you know exactly what you're doing? Um, I don't have too many challenges because I'm going to tell you that I feel that eating is a big mental part. I don't know if you talked about, like, I'm sure you know this yourself. So it is a mental decision and fasting is also mental. There is the physical side of it, but you need to like have a mental sort of idea that this is how it's going to be. There have been a few things. And at the very beginning, I can remember one time I went into a grocery store here and they were handing out these lovely little pieces of chocolate, you know, for free that they like, try this, you might want to buy it. So I was walking around and I picked one of those up from the nice lady and I popped it in my mouth. And I thought to myself, as I chewed that down, wow, you just broke your fast. <laughs> you're not fasting, I said to myself. And then if you eat, you're not fasting. And I was like, yeah, yeah, okay, so no more of that. But the other, you, you've talked about this, the whole social side of eating, people get very uncomfortable when you don't eat in front of them. So I have little stories. So, so like I say to them, oh, I just had this like great big lunch. I couldn't eat like another bite if I wanted to. And that's how I kind of deal with it. Right. You know? And so it, because socially, so I even had, and like you, so basically if I know that I have to go to something that's work related and there's lunch, I just eat and don't say anything. I just, you know, try to go easy on the eating, like try to eat cheese and like crackers and stuff like that, you know, not too over the top. Right. So right. those are, you know, so it, it's basically that some of the challenges have been getting into the mindset that, you know, you're fasting and mm -hmm. that you can't just cheat and have a piece of anything, like not right. even a chocolate chip as you walk by the bag in the, in the, in the cupboard, you just don't eat. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, and that's how I kind of do it. And it's, I think probably it's my mental, my mentality. So I can like compartmentalize things and and that's how I manage not to do it. So that's that's a challenge. I haven't had any challenges with my family. I have had a few people when I told them what I'm doing. The other thing, I don't really share this with people that I know because people think you're starving yourself to death. They right. think you're crazy. So when people say, wow, my God, you've lost a lot of weight. I say, yes, I have. And they say, how did you do that? And I say, I eat a lot less is mm -hmm. what I say. I don't say I don't eat. I eat a right. lot less. And I only tell people when they go, no, like, really? Like, how did you do that? And I go, mm -hmm. okay, you really want to know? And usually what I do is I send them information, all the YouTube channels and say, you know, and then I tell them, don't, don't do what I do unless you talk to your doctor, because if you're taking medicine or anything, you can't just decide to fast. Like you need to be followed by somebody. So that right. is one of the things, how I do it. So you asked what, what piece of advice you would give somebody. And th this is an interesting thing now that I have been heavier and then skinnier. But like I said before, I didn't really have a lot of issues with um, like trying to lose weight. This was not a, like a thing for me. Like I just was fat and I was okay with it. And either you liked me the way I was or you didn't like me because I was fat. It was kind of, that was kind of crazy. And I had nice clothes and hit it well. 
you know, people would be shocked when they heard that I weighed 215 pounds, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, what I would tell people, what would I tell people? I tell people that they can do it. Like I, you need to know, I am just a regular person. Like I am no one special. And I don't mean that in a, in a mean way. Like I just, I, you know, I am a normal, regular person. I am, you know, I live in a house with my family. It's not special. And the same for you. I see your lifestyle. You are just like me. Mm -hmm. and, and we just decided this is not like, well, for me, it was really, I don't want to be diabetic. Like I really, I got too many things to do in my life that that is not really one of the options. And for you, I don't, yeah, I don't remember what you said about yourself. You're the same, and you're in the same boat. You just don't want to be that way. You took a look at yourself and said, that is not the person I want to be. Right. Right. Exactly. I could tell myself, or I could see I was being held back by it, you know? Yes. Oh, totally. And you see, I didn't really feel that I was being held back, but now when I look back, oh man, I can see that really it was limiting, mm -hmm. but I had, was always physically active. I didn't have any health issues like joints or anything with it. I could do all the things that I wanted to do, but I can even do more now. And one of the things that fasting gives you is incredible amounts of energy. For whatever reason, I don't even know why. Like, could you, can you, do you know why that is? It, I've heard because you're using the fat from your body yeah. and that's what's powering, you know, you. I, I don't know. I actually do not know why, but I have way, way more energy. Now I can't decide, is that because I'm skinnier or just because, I don't know. Yeah, I my husband is very skinny and he doesn't do too well yet <laughs> with intermittent fasting. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I see, I, so my husband is like your husband my husband you know he thinks about losing five pounds and the next day he's five pounds lighter you know he cuts out one 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 like piece of something and like oh I think I'll lose five pounds and you know like no no, no. it kills me you know but he, right. he I'll tell you that he is a pharmacist and that he is on his feet all day at his job and so I think he he burns it off and, that, and he comes from a long line of skinny people there are not a lot of heavy people in his life when I think of myself and I bet you do too I feel like I was a skinny person trapped in a fat body and I don't know exactly like how I got to be that person it has to do with the food that I was eating it had nothing to do with like my mental state or being depressed or anything like that. But it has to be, when I look at my body, I realize, oh, I do have a skinny body, but I allowed it to get fat. Like right. that's how I would describe it, you know? And by eating the wrong type of foods and not exercising and just no self, I won't even say it's self-control because that is, that is the wrong thing. It, I just didn't care. And so I ate what I wanted. Mm -hmm. Now I'm a little, it's not, yeah, I don't know. What do you say? It's self-control, not self-control. I would say it's not. It's just a decision to eat less, right? Right. You know, now when I look at things, I say to myself, you know, do I need that big a piece? Like, can I, like, what would make me happy? Oh, a little square or a big square? And, you know, I eat one cookie and I, like, so one of some of the things I do is, like, at least I still make cookies. Like, you have children. I'm sure you still have desserts in your house, right? So I will make cookies and I'll put them in the freezer. And then we can, you know, if you want one, you can pull it out and you can microwave it and then you have a cookie. But you right. don't have to eat. 12 cookies and they don't go to waste. Yeah, it's been an interesting journey, I, I am going to tell you. And I think we should do an interview in one year because it'll be my two year trip. So, and I'd like to lose 40 more pounds. That's my next goal. So my, my first goal was 160. I'm pretty close to that, even though I'm 161. I'd like to weigh 140. My doctor would be a step, very happy if I did that. So that's my this year's goal. And as I as I travel down this, I'm going to try some other things. I might try a little have more keto eating um, in that style of eating. And I'm just going to see what comes along. I see Jason Fung today in, on Twitter. Did you see his Twitter? Uh, yeah. He's in the doghouse apparently for promoting this style of eating. Oh, no. I felt bad for him. So, so basically, you know, I've always been, I'd say you're an introvert and I'm an extrovert. That is my personality. Um, I, I'm an information junkie. I want to know all about things. So I'm a consumer of information. So I read, 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 and then I ponder it, you know, and it, when I, I had, I have a little story. So one of the days way in the summer, way, way in the summer, I remember this, it was hot. That's why I remember. And I was feeling a tad sorry for myself. You know how like, oh, I don't want to have to, why do I have to eat this way? It shouldn't have to be this way. Okay. This is, you know, the universe speaking to you. And I got in the car, we have a radio station called CBC and at noon hour, they have a, a talk show, got in the car and they were talking about the impact of um, amputations on people who have type two diabetes and their life. 
So they had this woman on there who had lost both her feet. And I thought to myself, okay, no more, Mary Kennedy. You will never feel sorry for yourself because you don't want to go down that road. So right. you just need to keep eating the way you do and you'll be fine. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's my little story of being like, so every, yeah, I don't, do you ever feel sorry for yourself that this is the life you're on? Not anymore. I mean, do you take a cheat day or do you just every Well, okay, day? so basically um, I was just, you know, sort of doing it on and off, hit and miss, right? In the sense that I, you know, depending on what was happening, I would have, end up having more meals a day than I wanted to. Well, not even that I wanted to, but just that life was busy. But I now basically on Saturday, I don't do Sunday because Sundays are, I'm busier on Saturdays and it's easier for me to eat on Saturday. So basically on Saturdays, I kind of have what I want, but I still don't go overboard because really in the back of my mind, I just think to myself, you don't want to be diabetic. So if I, I would have an ice cream on like a Saturday and stuff, I, I let's say I have three meals a day on Saturday, but I don't go crazy. But I eat like, if, you know, like if I'm like craving something, I'll say, oh, just have it on Saturday, but often enough. And I bet you find this when Saturday rolls around, it's a new thing you want to have. You know, right, it's right. like the thought of cheesecake or the thought of ice cream has been replaced with cake or whatever. Right, right. Right? So you have that and that and that satisfies you. Yeah. Anyway. And I think that, that helped me to not feel sorry for myself because I yes. always had one day. Of just you can being... do whatever you want. Yeah. I, can, I think, well, I think really what I, for me, it's like, I, I, I really don't want to be diabetic. And so I can eat those things. And you're right, the cheat day works the best, actually. But I don't, I don't even classify it as that. It's the day I eat three meals. Right. Yeah. You yeah, know, people don't I get up and have a cheat day. And I get that. I don't even like to call it that. But well, it is kind of, it's a, it's a day off or something, you know, it's not a, it's not a full fledged you know, and the thing is, we're coming now into, we just had Thanksgiving. I had come back from holiday, had a big Thanksgiving. And I have to tell you, when I stood on that scale, it was like four pounds heavier. Uh, like, I was like, okay, that cannot happen. Like that was too much work. But you know what? As soon as I stopped eating, mm -hmm. it went back to like the normal. So it right. was just like water or whatever happens when you eat too much. And I find if you eat like a lot of salty food, the scale goes up. We, you talk about this a lot, how the scale fluctuates. As long as it's heading down, that's the direction. It's not heading up. I oh, yeah. Small little lines, so. Right. Oh, yeah. Mine went up by four pounds, uh, uh, like, today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then you think, what, what is this? Like, how is that possible? And then the days you think, oh, man, I overate. I'm going to be sorry. It's like 161 where you were the next. Like, I don't know. I don't know how they work, but. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. And I would tell people, don't get discouraged. And, and I would say, find more people like you. Most people will not understand what you're doing. And people who are already heavy and, and uh, where I found the most negative are people who are already heavy, who really want to lose weight, who are a bit stressed that you've been able to do this. They don't want to hear that you can't eat, you know, like, yeah. mm. or, you know, basically, and it's not even that you can't eat. Like, that's how, not how I see it at all. I see it as choosing to eat at only a certain hours of the day. That's how right, I look right. at it. Right, right. Yeah. And sometimes on the days that I exercise, so I still exercise Monday and Wednesday and Friday, and I run after now that I exercise. So I'm able to go on. The, I, Yeah, I can always kind of run. And so I started adding that into it. And on the days that I run, I sometimes, it, depending on how I feel, will have a little snack before I go. I try to have, I have some fat bombs made. I don't uh -huh. tend to use them, but I also... Um, have keto muffins so if I am um, like really starving before I go exercise then I'll have one but I really I don't even really need to do that anymore mm -hmm. like today I exercised and, and then I went square dancing and I still have lots of energy to go all day all night I love your life <laughs> <laughs> yeah well you wait you'll get older and have your children will get older you'll get more of a life it's less right. looking after yeah. them right yeah. that's the reality of it so Mary, if somebody would like to get in touch with you, you know, maybe uh, just ask you some, some questions or if they just want to see what you're up to, uh, what's the best way they can do that? So they can get in touch with me on Facebook or they can email me. So I'm friends with you on Facebook. That's where they would find me, I think. I also have a YouTube channel for music. They could hunt me down on that too, but it has a weird name. Oh, I'm not very good at this part. <laughs> you can, okay. I can, they need I can to talk to you and then they can talk to me. Right. <laughs> I guess. I right. Know. 
Okay, well, thank you so much, Mary. I appreciate you uh, being a part of this and telling me. Yeah, yeah. So tell people to get a hold of me if they have any questions. I will guide them the best of my ability. And well, let's do this again soon. Like in, maybe in six months or something, and we can see how I'm making out. I do much better when I'm accountable to somebody.